We're here with Tom Whalen from Pokemon and Pokemon fame and a lot of other fame as well. Um, how did you get into Pokemon? Okay, Pokemon, it was sort of a long road that led me here. Pokemon has been around for a long time. Um, we're into recording our 18th season now, which is pretty cool. And you've voiced more characters than anybody. I have voiced more Pokemon creatures than anybody, I think. I've also voiced a bunch of different human characters in the show. Um, I first got involved in Pokemon. I used to direct for a company called 4Kids that had the license to Pokemon for its first eight seasons. And I uh, was directing uh, with them back then, so that I started to have some involvement. But then the license changed hands. Pokemon started producing it directly, uh, no middleman. And me and uh, some friends of mine who are uh, producers started like lobbying to get the production contract. So uh, about eight years ago, we took over the production contract. So I, in addition to being in the show, I direct it. So for the last seven years, I've been directing the show and then really got into uh, playing a lot of different characters and creatures for the show. It's been awesome. I was going to say, what's it like? What, what, what is it like to be all the different creatures and then you have to come up with their specific voice? Um, it's fun. You know, you, well, you had to get creative. It's a bit of a challenge. Very often, you know, we take our cues from what the Japanese do uh, and we'll sort of do a sort of a takeoff on that. But sometimes it's, um, you know, you got to come up with something different or original. And it's a challenge because when you have a certain creature that's based off of, uh, an easy to identify animal, like a frog, you know, it might want to sound croaky. But some of the creatures are like, there's one that's an ice cream cone. There's one that's a sword, you know, and the, like the sword creatures are, are new ones that I just recently came up with voices for. But with that, it's like, well, what does a sword sound like? So you really have to kind of figure out, well, you know, what can I do with this that seems appropriate to the way it looks, the way it moves. And, What's a sword sound like? Well, the thing is called Hone Edge, and, and I... Oh, I meant, can you do the voice? Oh, I know, but I'm oh. telling you, it's, it's, it's called Hone Edge. It's Pokemon express themselves by saying their name or, or syllables of their name, which is why Pikachu is always like Pika Pika, you know. Um, but Hone Edge, I, you, you only get sort of part of it because what I did is I put a flanger on it and I make it sound sort of like hound, hound edge, like that. So with the flanger, it sounds like a lightsaber. I like it, that's awesome. Now, that's pretty cool. Um, and I like how you try and figure out how they would sound or how the, you know, like the sword would sound. Pokemon, you said, has been around a while. I mean, I think Pokemon, I first heard about it in the late 90s, like 97, 98. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, I, I believe the TV series started airing in Japan uh, in, in like mid-97 and came to America by uh, September 98. And, you know, so it's it's been around a long time. Like on the air right now, uh, it airs Saturday mornings on Cartoon Network at like 8 a.m., I believe. And... It, the episodes they're airing now are nearing the end of season 17. And just so you know, a season of Pokemon, it's not like 13 or 26. It's like 50 episodes. So we're like 800 plus episodes into the run. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Now, I got a question for you. The comics or the, the cartoons on television for the first time ever last Saturday did not run on network television well, for the first time in 50 years, did not run on network television in the U.S. That was sad to me. I grew up watching those cartoons on Saturday morning. Was that sad for you? Well, it, it is and it isn't because everything is changing. Um, I know that there are people out there nationally who still would just get their cartoons, their TV, their media on only network television. But the vast, vast, vast majority, especially of young people... They're watching things on cable. They're watching things on the internet. And that's where it's all going, you know, new media. So there is tons of Saturday morning cartoons on Nickelodeon, our Cartoon Network, on Disney, on Hulu, on Netflix, all over the internet. Cart Saturday morning cartoons are not dead. No, they're, they're just not network anymore. Right, but it was like this sad thing, especially being a, a former broadcaster. Like, I don't work in broadcast anymore. I work in streaming. But... Being a former broadcaster, I, there was a sadness to that, I guess, and it also reminds me, broadcast is well, dying. Yeah, it it, it is it is it's just the the changing face right. of media, where network isn't what it used to be, and there's you know obviously good and bad with that because the accessibility, the on demand quality of your streaming media, you know, is very beneficial. So that's something that 
that's something where it, it feels like all media is going. You know what I mean? Where it's not going to be TV networks so much. It's just going to be, you know, you go to that online web portal and that's where you see your stuff. You have a couple of kids. I have three kids. Three. A trio. Uh, what do you guys do for fun to relax, whatever? Um, my kids play a lot of sports, which is awesome. <laughs> it's like my oldest son, Henry, uh, plays baseball and he's fantastic. Uh, what position? He's a center fielder. Uh, nice. Yes. Yeah, he's very fast. Um, and he's a great hitter. And um, my middle son, Finn, plays soccer and he's really good. And my youngest son, Ben, he plays soccer and baseball. He's a switch hitter. He's six. He's a switch hitter. He's got insane power, which weirds me On out. On both sides of the plate? Yes, he does. That's impressive. Yeah. Um, well, so our producers are telling me that he, the Yankees just called. They want to know if he wants to get into the program now. Uh, he does. Yes, <laughs> he does. He does. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, my kids do a lot of sports, but also, like, um, my middle son, Finn, is very artistic. Uh, my older son is really – he's in acting. And the other thing is they play – a lot of video games minecraft they're nuts for you know and they play they're great at video games and one thing that's funny i remember like teaching them how to play you know we have we're xbox people so like playing on the xbox and at first you know my son's being all frustrated like playing them on halo on multiplayer or whatever and they're like why why don't you know why you don't you let up on me i'm like you're never gonna get good if i go easy on you and now they kick my ass at these games awesome and i like that you don't go easy on them uh i think that's terrific what is your favorite character from Pokemon that you've ever voiced or just in general? Well, I, I think maybe one of my favorite ones is Arceus. Um, Arceus is a Pokemon creature who's like a legendary Pokemon. Uh, and he's the focus of the 12th movie. There's a movie every year, so movie number 17 will hit the airwaves soon. But um, he's, I'm sort of paraphrasing here, but he kind of translates as being like the Pokemon Lord of Creation, so people would refer to him as like the Pokemon God. It's not exactly what he is, but I kind of liked that connotation, so I could, you know, lord over everyone that I was the Pokemon God. And can we get a, like a couple of voices back to back? Okay, so the, this is going to be real loud, but like the, the Arceus guy when he's pissed off, because um, he sort of has his peaceful side, but his angry side He's always dispensing justice, so he'd tell people, prepare for justice! You know, which... I love it. Yeah. But then also I do little cute ones like Charmander, who's like, Char, Charmander! You know, like that. So it's, it's a whole range. What do you think of Comic-Con New York? It's super fun. Uh, one of the, my favorite things about Comic-Con is that I'm from here, so I don't have to travel very far. <laughs> um, but I really watched this thing grow, because I've been coming to Comic-Con you know, pretty much since it started. Um, I have a lot of friends, you know, who are here, other talent, other vendors, people who uh, who work for Reed Expositions, who run the thing. So it's so much fun. And I like, I do convention appearances like across the country here and there. But this is great because everybody gets to come to my town. So this way, you know, I can be the host for a change. Pretty awesome. And you're doing New England Comic Con or the Northeast Comic Con December 6th and 7th in uh, just outside Boston. Yes, I am. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll be there with uh, with Billy West and Marky Ramon, my buddy Mike Pollock, who's Dr. Eggman from the Sonic the Hedgehog series. Um, we're going to be actually teaching a voiceover workshop there. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Congratulations on this and that, and thank you so much for joining us. I'll tell you what, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we're going to come back with a whole lot more live coverage from Comic-Con 2014 right after this.